haven't heard of Sizzle International, you soon will. It is the most dynamic direct sales company in the world, and there's no stopping it. I'm Rod Hansen, COO of Sizzle. It is my great honor and privilege to introduce to you today someone who really needs no introduction. He is one of the most important figures in network marketing history. He has built from nothing one of the largest and most successful MLM companies of all time. And he's doing it again with Sizzle. Only this time, he's starting out massive right from the very start. Unlike most companies that start out small and hope to grow, Sizzle is starting out as a huge company with all the resources, innovation, experience, and momentum of any company in the world. Sizzle's growth has been nothing short of explosive and is being driven like a raging fire with the most revolutionary products and money-making opportunity ever conceived. Listen carefully to the secret of this enormous opportunity. It is one that could supercharge your health while making you fabulously wealthy far beyond your wildest expectations. This is a rare opportunity to gain valuable insight from one of the most fascinating thought leaders of our time. He is not only one of the most respected scientists in the health and personal care industry, he has one of the most charismatic yet genuine and interesting marketing and sales personalities of anyone I know that engenders trust and confidence in those who meet him. In my opinion, he is the greatest of all the greats. There's simply no one else like him. I give to you, Mr. Tom Auer Sr. Sizzle's a creation that I had in mind for a long time because I started a company over 20 years ago and it became a very large successful company. In fact, is, as many of you know, it became one of the largest multi-level marketing companies in the world. I had never been involved in network marketing before, ever in my life. And like a lot of people, I had some really serious misconceptions of what network marketing was. But I came across a very significant discovery. And in the business I was in, I was making industrial chemicals and was selling them to supermarket chains and hospitals and manufacturing plants and businesses of all sorts, hotel, motel trade. And I had accounts like the Albertson stores and a lot of the, even the big hotels down in Vegas and nursing homes and hospitals everywhere. The reason I'm telling you that is because in that type of business, you're involved with making products that are really high performance products. And if they don't work, you don't have the account. And you have a team of professional salespeople that are out selling. And so my background was involved in professional selling, training, and manufacturing commercial industrial chemicals. An example I like to use, if you had a floor wax and you're selling it, you need to have the shiniest floor wax and one that where it lasts and you can uh, clean it off easily and restore the shine to it. And the better your floor wax is, the better they're going to be in selling the product. So I made products like that and I was always looking for ways to make them better so I could have a better engine degreaser or car wash soap or disinfectant or a weed killer. And in the process of it, I came across an interesting discovery because I was always researching new scientific uh, research. One study that I found from the University of Helsinki in Finland, they were testing products for skin cancer on men's scalps because men are outside so much, they have a lot of UV uh, radiation and they get a lot of skin cancer. And during the process of trying different ointments on the skin to see if they could either prevent or arrest skin cancer, they had a remarkable discovery, and it had nothing to do with the skin cancer. In fact, is none of the products even worked for skin cancer. But what they found was one of the compounds they were rubbing in was going into the skin and breaking down the compound or emulsifying the compound that was causing male pattern baldness. Now, it was a total surprise to the study, but these guys who didn't have hair suddenly started growing hair. And this was the study for skin cancer. And they said, wow, a side effect, what's happening? So they did about a three and a half year study on it and determined that an emulsifier, a compound within the formulation, the lotion, was actually cleaning away the hormone that caused male pattern baldness. And up to that time, science pretty well thought the hair follicle died, but they found out it wasn't dead, it was dormant, made dormant by this hormone. And so this emulsifier was a very common one. I looked at it because I was selling a lot of big supermarkets and I thought, wow, here's a product that maybe I could bring out and sell in the supermarket because male pattern baldness is a big issue. So I sat on it for a number of years without doing anything and then started researching it. And I found that the emulsifier was a very safe one. In fact, as it was used in salad dressing. 
and it would keep an oil and water emulsion together. And so it was an edible ingredient. So here, literally, you could take an ingredient that was used in blue cheese salad dressing and rub it onto your scalp, and it would clean out the hormone that was keeping the hair from growing. It was that simple. So I thought, well, I'll bring a product out and see if I can sell it through supermarkets because there's a lot of guys that have lost their hair. As a consequence, I got the ingredient, made the formulas, started using it on some people uh, to see if it worked, and sure enough, hair started to grow. Not because the compound was growing hair, but it was simply cleaning away the factor that was keeping the hair from growing. So then I decided, well, I'll talk to the people at uh, these big supermarket chains and see if I can get it in because I've got a lot of influence with them. I'm selling them all of their maintenance chemicals. And I found out that I could not do that. Even though they would put it on the shelf, it wouldn't sell because I couldn't advertise it. And the reason I couldn't advertise it was because if I said it regrew hair, that is a drug claim. But I found out there was another way of saying it. If I said it made thin hair appear thick, then you could market it. But how are you going to sell anything like that off the supermarket shelf? So I thought this thing isn't going to work. But out of the blue, people started knocking on my door. And they were coming to my house and asking me to make this product for a company that they worked for because they were in direct sales or multi-level marketing, and they were looking for exciting products. And the reason they were coming is they had seen people who had lost their hair that they knew that were actually growing hair by using this product. A network marketing company needs exciting products to grow. I didn't really want to get involved in it to start with because I had a, a misconception about network marketing, whether it was an ethical way of doing business. But some of the people were so persistent, as you find with network marketing people, that they just kept coming and the companies did. And finally I said, okay, I will make it for you if you're willing to buy enough product to do it. So I started to eventually make products for these companies and private label it for them. And they went out and started to sell it because if it worked, it worked. And so that's how the concept of this company got started. So anyway, based upon the fact in my industrial chemical research, I came across this product that they tested at the University of Helsinki in Finland of where they're using it for skin cancer, but they were rubbing it in the scalp and all of this hair started to regrow. I found out that it was made from an emulsifier that actually was used in salad dressing to dissolve oil and water products together. And in doing so, it was actually cleaning away the factor that caused male pattern baldness. Now, that didn't cure anything. It was simply cleaning it away. It was a remarkable discovery, and I was pretty shocked that it was so safe and that you could eat it, yet you could rub it onto your scalp. And so I started private labeling it, doing it for other companies for quite a while. In the process of doing that, they came to me and they said, can you make hair, hair shampoo? Because uh, hair shampoo goes right with it. I said, sure. I don't know how to make a hair shampoo, but I manufacture industrial chemicals. I can figure out how to do that. So I went into my shower, and I took my bottle of hair shampoo, and I took a look at it for what the ingredients were because I thought I had a pretty good one. And so as I looked at the ingredients, I got the shock of my life because here one of the ingredients was I made car wash soap out of this one, and I made industrial degreaser out of this one, and I made garage floor cleaner out of this one, and this one was industrial antifreeze. And that was all in my hair shampoo. I said, holy cow, how are those things getting in there? So I went down and called these uh, manufacturers and I said, what is the difference between the sodium lauryl sulfate that is used in my hair shampoo and the industrial degreasers and garage floor cleaners I'm making? He said, there's no difference. It's in the same drum. You get the same drum that the cosmetic manufacturers get. And I said, my people have to wear rubber suits and masks and gloves and everything when they're handling this. It's not supposed to be on skin contact. And as I looked at propylene glycol, I said, this is industrial antifreeze. This is brake fluid. This is what I make out of this. And in these products, it's what? A moisturizer? Is that what you're saying? They said, yes. And I said, on the material safety data sheet, it says to avoid skin contact because it could cause kidney damage and liver abnormalities. Is it any different in a skin treatment? And he said, well, they don't test them for that. And I said, how are these ingredients ever put into personal care products? I don't understand it. And he said, they're grandfathered in. There was a certain time, science didn't know what these ingredients did for a long, long time, and, and it came to the point where they're going to be regulated. And rather than test these tens of thousands of ingredients that are out there, 
they just grandfathered in everything that was used. And that was a real shock to me. And so I thought at that time, if I'm going to make a hair shampoo, now I morally cannot make a hair shampoo using those ingredients. So I knew enough about industrial chemistry and manufacturing products that I'm sure I could make one without using those kinds of ingredients in it. And I also found that from the study at the University of Helsinki that they were studying hair shampoos too. And they found that a certain molecule was causing hair to grow slower and causing it to fall out. And that was part of their study they did on the side effects of the product they're using. I thought, if I'm going to use a shampoo that will assist men in getting their hair back with this conditioner, I certainly don't want a shampoo that keeps the hair from growing. If the conditioner is going to do that, the shampoo had better be compatible with it. So I looked at the shampoos and I found out almost all of them were using this type of chemistry in the shampoo. So it didn't make much sense to me that shampoos were using ingredients that would inhibit hair growth or healthy hair. And they were using ingredients that were what I'd call potentially harmful. And some of these ingredients contained phthalates, a potential cancer-causing agent, bisphenol A. Maybe you've heard about baby bottles where they're saying get rid of the baby bottles because it leaches out into the product. And another serious one is dioxins, 1,4-dioxin, a very serious endocrine disruptor. It acts like estrogen, uh, but it's also a potential cancer-causing agent. And all of these compounds could be byproducts of many ingredients that are commonly used in everyday personal care products. Now, I knew this because I was in the industrial chemical business, and so I thought, I'm not going to make products with these ingredients in it. I'm going to make products without it. And so I started on a mission to do that, making products that did not use any potentially harmful ingredients. And based upon that, I started producing products for some other companies, and the public really liked that idea because people like myself did not understand that these products had the potentially harmful qualities or properties that they do. So I made a statement at one time, and I stand by that statement today, the best thing about my personal care products is what's not in them because there are a great number of potentially harmful ingredients in personal care products. I think we have a moral obligation as a manufacturer to tell people that these potentially harmful ingredients are in products so the people have the right to know to choose and use products that don't have them in it. It's just like what's happening right now. Fish in rivers now don't develop properly because these are estrogen, they're feminine type mimics and they get into the water and they keep the male fish from knowing when to cycle, when to spawn, when to reproduce. And you see things like cancer rates, uh, and I think a lot of it is attributable to personal care products. Dr. Samuel Epstein, who is head of the Department of Environmental Science at the University of Chicago, says it's the worst source of contaminants that we get into our body is the personal care products that we use. You have more contaminants in those than you do in food that you eat, water you drink, or air that you breathe. So I started to manufacture products that did not contain these types of ingredients. But then I had customers coming to me and saying, well, you've got a great product now for people that have lost their hair and the shampoo, but what do you have for wrinkles? That was the breakthrough time for me in this business because I thought, was it just a fluke that I found this study from the University of Helsinki where a safe natural ingredient had a great effect? Or is there more science like this that is out there that can be discovered? Are there a lot of things that are being researched and not brought to the marketplace? So my philosophy was that there's got to be more out there. This can't be the exception. So I started researching the research, and that's the term that I coined to start with. And I started looking through all kinds of research to see what someone had found in one way or another that would work on wrinkles. And I found a quite an interesting discovery down in Santiago, Chile, at the University of Concepcion, where they were taking an oil from a seed from a rose that grew in the Andes. It had been used historically on people's skin for burns, for skin ulcers. And they were testing it at their burn center, and they noted in their testing that it was very effective on aged skin. It made the wrinkles just seemed to disappear. It, the skin looked a lot younger. It was having a powerful effect on the skin, and it was natural, and it wasn't in the marketplace. 
So that was the second product that I went after. So I went after that product and brought it in and started to bottle it and put it out and women were using it and it was really having an effect on their skin. So because of that, I realized now I had found the secret to building really great products. And so it started me on a mission and I formed a company. I decided I'm going to form a company based upon researching the research. That was the first thing. The second thing is I was not going to use any harmful ingredients or potentially harmful ingredients in my products. And so I made the statement that if I find anything that is potentially harmful, I'll remove it from my products. But I know a lot of things that are, that actually you can go and you find reams and reams of science saying these ingredients are very harmful in this condition and they do occur in these types of products. And so I simply avoid them and tell people about it. Now, in the process of it, I evolved from skin care into dietary supplements because I found a very interesting discovery a number of years in China. In about 1988, I flew to China to see if I could get this ingredient and bring it to the United States. It was a very expensive ingredient because it was extracted from a seaweed of where it was in a small quantity, but it had a powerful effect to make you feel and look a lot younger. It supported almost every biological system that you had in your body, according to researchers. And there's a massive amount of research on it. But at the time, I couldn't get it. But I did find some other interesting discoveries. I could have got it, but it was so expensive, I couldn't sell it. It priced out of the marketplace. It was be like four or $500 a month to use it. So I thought, well, I'll put it on the back burner. But it opened my eyes. And I was raised a cowboy on a little cattle ranch. So when I grew up, I didn't think much about uh, going to the doctor or taking a dietary supplement or a vitamin. I, I didn't ever think about those things. I thought you got enough out of the food that you ate. But I find out that you don't, that food is very nutritionally deficient. The minerals and the nutrition that's in food, most of that was eaten generations ago. We're just getting what's left in the soil. And so they've got to fertilize the heck out of it to even get it to grow to where it's presentable in a lot of cases. And so I came to the determination that if we're not getting enough nutrition out of our food, then we've got to supplement. In China, they have this philosophy that it's a poor doctor that practices cure. And traditionally in China, you paid a doctor to keep you healthy. And you would go to your doctor before the day of instrumentation, and they would examine you. And out of that, they would give you a diagnosis of what your condition was, and they would give you natural ingredients or extracts to take to fortify and support your body so that it could rebuild and become healthy. And so you paid your doctor to keep you healthy, and when you became sick, you stopped paying your doctor. Can you imagine that philosophy in America or in Europe? Go ask your doctor, say, you know, I'm gonna pay you and I come in here every month, and as long as I stay healthy, I'll keep paying you. When I get sick, I'm going to stop paying you. That really has a whole meaning on preventative health and for people that do have health conditions. If there was one society that has really studied the human body and developed a great amount of information and knowledge about nature and herbs and plants and all of these things and the relationship they have together, it's them. And so I started looking into this oriental natural medicine to see what was there and what really works. And in the process of it, I evolved to different places all around the world. And I found there are a great number of discoveries that are there that are not being brought to the marketplace that you can bring out and you can have a product that is extraordinarily powerful to support the body and its biological system. And in doing so, I brought out product after product. Nothing in necessarily a sequence, but as I would find something, I would bring it out. And my company grew and grew and grew. And it became to where it was approaching a billion dollar a year company in sales. And I liked dealing with people and I saw people in their lives, they were optimistic, but struggling. And I thought, if anything, I can design a company to help people to get financially free and to, to get out of debt and to have a better quality life. And I can bring them the real science in products. And I can show them what's harmful in the personal care products that they're using and how to have a cleaner life and, and how to supplement with the things that are really important to them for the conditions that they're having or the ones that they don't want to have. Because actually the science is there 
for us to live, I believe, a very long, healthy life. And so I sold my company for a great deal of money. And in the process of doing it, I had people coming to me and said, you know, Tom, you can go do whatever you want to do for the rest of your life. And I said, strangely enough, I'm doing what I want to do. I like this business. I like finding great discoveries and bringing them out and helping people in their life. And I like helping people to become financially free, to get out of debt, to, to greatly improve their lifestyle. And I love free enterprise. I like seeing people work to really get ahead in life. And as many of you know, when you work a job, you know, it's a J-O-B, you've heard that just over broke. You're working for somebody else's future. It's not yours. You're working for the shareholders or the bank or the owners, and they pay you time for dollars. And when you start trading time for dollars, essentially you've sold your future. But with a program like network marketing, you can build a future. You can have an army of people working for you. And because network marketing is built upon smart math, there's a great opportunity there. So now having sold my company, I thought, I know how to do this business about as well as anybody in the world. I have assembled a team of research scientists who I think are great, and we know how to bring products to the marketplace. Remember, my background was industrial chemical manufacturing, so we made the products that we sold. So I decided that I'm going to build a new plant, a state-of-the-art, a magnificent, huge facility to start with because I want to do this business for the rest of my life because I believe in it. I believe that our lives should be worth something. And this is a great business to do that because you can help people to be successful. You can help people to have incredibly good health, to live a very long life, or at least become financially free and take care of their debts and improve their lifestyle. And I thought, what better thing could you do with your life than that? I believe I'm at the peak of my career right now, and I've got the resources to do it. So with that idea, I built one of the premier manufacturing plants in the entire world. We can make the products that we sell. And see, a lot of people in network marketing don't realize that they're selling somebody else's product with their label on it. And the companies say, oh, our products are the greatest. But in reality, they can have the same formula that hundreds and hundreds of other companies have, just a different label, a different bottle that it's in. And the technology is all pretty well the same. So I wanted to make highly advanced products, ones that are spectacular in performance, that do what it's supposed to do, and teach people on how to sell them, and to give them an opportunity to where they can make a real business for themselves, a home-based business, one where they can change their future. So with that philosophy, I started Sizzle. This is the basic foundation of what's made Sizzle. Sizzle's a giant company from the very beginning. It's in my mind, it's in my heart. I know it to be true. I've developed the company. We have got teams of people who are behind this that are working on this philosophy to bring out these dynamic, spectacular ingredients. That's why Sizzle is already starting to explode. We're going to go into massive momentum here very, very quickly. Some of the products we have are so spectacular that there is no effective competition against them anywhere in the world. Dynamic products based upon real science used in the concentrations that we consider to be the most effective in beautiful packaging and display with a compensation and a marketing plan that is spectacular in and of itself so that people can create real wealth so they can build a future. And the company is starting out just now, and it's starting out not small, not out of someone's garage, as these stories go with the other companies that happen. We're starting out massive. So that's what this company is about. Sensational products, far beyond anything that competition has. An incredible compensation plan, and a more generous, fair payout than anything I believe is out there in the marketplace. And a huge company there to support you to give everything that you need to build your business. But yet when you come right back to the end of it, what's the most important element? You are. All of this is being done for you. I'm thrilled to do it. I love doing it. It's fun to help people to be healthy and successful and happy. If you looked at other companies or if you're looking at Sizzle or whatever you're doing right now, give us a real look because this is the company that's designed to do what it should be doing. This is the company 
that we formatted and we built so that it will endure, it will last, so that you can put your hope and your faith and your hard work and your energy and your integrity into this company because this is a company where integrity really counts and we do it in every way we can. Well, I hope this has helped you. That's a lot about the company and about the mission. Come and join us. We need great people. We're a great company. This is a great opportunity.